We all want a fulfilling life, a life with meaning, a life rich of experiences, a life that you can look back on feeling accomplished, one where you grow personally, a life during which you do your best to lead by example, and more importantly, pass on those essential core values to your loved ones. Core values materialize through behavior in the face of adversity. Ultra running is a way of confronting that adversity, testing ourselves during an epic journey through the Alpine landscape with the ultimate objective of reaching the finish line with the incredible feeling of accomplishment, sharing it with those we care for. A battle against ourselves to be stronger than that voice telling us to give up at the first sign of discomfort. An odyssey full of courage, passion, and tenacity. A journey that builds endurance and resilience. The difficult path that strengthens the character, the mind, and the body. Humbly pushing ourselves in the midst of these powerful mountains. Mountains that we need to respect and who in return can gratify us with a sense of accomplishment as we successfully complete the voyage through their peaks and valleys. Coming out on the other side a stronger person. Could this be what drives us? Back to Zermatt, a very late entry to this race that I was not initially able to sign up for due to the success of the event. I only managed to get a bib thanks to someone who decided to do another race. It's my last stop before my ultimate goal of running the Swiss Peaks 100km race. The Zermatt Old Tracks is a great venue with a great atmosphere. The weather is absolutely stunning and the energy is running high. This race is a great excuse to be back in our favorite Swiss village at the foot of the majestic Matterhorn. Adults and children alike are having a great time with the incredible animation from the organizers. The race village was probably one of the best I've seen in all the races I took part in. The course itself is very challenging. It's the longest I've ever taken part in, with 49 kilometers and near 3,300 meters of elevation gain on a course that enables the runners to have a beautiful view of the Matterhorn all day long. Starting in Zermatt at 7 o'clock in the morning, we climb up to the Gornergrat, which was the finish of my previous Zermatt race, at 3,100 meters. Then the trail heads back down towards the valley through Furi, and then up a steep climb to Schwarzsee, then back down again into the valley before we go up again to Trift, before the final descent to Zermatt. Okay, so we're in uh, Zermatt, last stop before the big race, last minute entry, uh, 10 to 7 in the morning, beautiful day coming up, so hopefully this is going to be a nice race with a beautiful view. So we're doing a 49 to 50 kilometer race, 3600 meters uh, ascent. Currently going towards the uh, the starting line, so we'll see how uh, how that goes. It's going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting uh, trial before the the main race in uh, in September. So we'll see how that goes. It's an early start to the day, and as always before these races, the excitement and the anxiety made it difficult for me to get to sleep the night before, so I'm quite sleepy heading to the start of the race. This weekend, six races are taking place, each with a different distance and elevation gain. 19.5 kilometers, 25 kilometers, 32 kilometers, a vertical 2.3 kilometer race, a relay race, and my 49 kilometer course are on the menu. As with many of the races this year, the start is organized in waves. 
based on our estimated course time. The organization of this event is truly outstanding. Despite the COVID restrictions, the organizers have managed to maintain a very good level of energy at the start line. It's now time for my Group E to embark on our odyssey through these massive mountains. I feel like an astronaut, heading towards the launch pad, looking up at the heavens that I will soon be heading towards after blast off. It's a solemn march towards new discoveries, explorers of the sky heading towards unknown lands. <laughs> Und der da noch eine Minute bis zum Start des nächsten Blocks hier auf dieser 49 k distanz mit 3006. It's blast off. Destination 3100 meters for the first phase of this journey. Today, I'm feeling pretty well, despite the early morning start. It's still fresh at this time, but I'm anticipating having to take off some layers very soon. This first part of the race is the same section I had done in the previous Zermatt race. Not too steep to start with, which enables me to keep a good rhythm. It's a beautiful forest section that heads out of Zermatt, giving us another perspective on the Matterhorn. In trail running, you can only rely on yourself and your determination. It sometimes feels a little lonely, despite being surrounded by my fellow runners. But ultimately, we're not alone. Our loved ones are with us along the way, in our hearts. And the mountains keep an eye on us along our journey, as we dive into a deep concentration, focusing on our rhythm. I've had my heart broken in two. But something's different next to you. Like my soul is set on fire But oh, I'm starting to feel tired Cause I can run but I It was still very early in the race as we go by the Sunega station, which was at kilometer 30 in the previous Zermatt race. Okay, so it's kilometer 7.5 approximately in the Sunega station. Um, feeling pretty weird actually. Very good and amazing views, absolutely amazing views. Super cool. After refueling with some solids and liquids, I start the short downhill that precedes the massive climb up to the Gornograt. Having had a good training of downhills in the Sierzinal race, I was feeling pretty confident on this section. It was not technical and I could therefore go faster than I would normally have gone on a downhill. I knew that if I wanted to gain time, it would be in these sections. Run, but I can't hide. 
Bonjour. Merci. As we start the big ascent, I'm still feeling pretty well and the morale is sky high. The weather is absolutely incredible. We have now headed out of the woods again and passing the 2,200 meter mark as we admire this incredible landscape. At this point, many runners were starting to feel the strain of this very steep climb towards the Gornograd. I'm starting to feel it as well. All good? That is good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah. As we continue our ascent in this magnificent mountain range, I'm already thinking of the next race. 100 kilometers and 6,200 meters elevation gain. I wonder how in the world I'm going to manage that feat. And I'm hoping not to injure myself in this final race. But I quickly clear those thoughts and get back into my concentration bubble, being present and enjoying this amazing day and these awesome views. But now is the moment to push as I'm nearing the summit of this course and it's going to be difficult. Kilometer 14, 228 minutes, 1,500 meters ascent. We're 2,800 meters. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view. Absolutely incredible. Oh, this is what dreams are made of. Oh my. Good morning, morning. Wow. We all know that. Well, we definitely arrived uh, faster than the, in the previous race. That's good. Not feeling too, too bad this time. So we're at 3,066 meters, 1,700 meters ascent, 15.6 uh, kilometers in. Here we are near the Gornalgrat and the beautiful, beautiful glacier. Incredible. Fantastic. Amazing. And it's 3,000 meters. Enjoy. Merci. Merci. I finally arrive at the Gornograd after a little more than three hours of climbing. People usually make it here by train, which connects Zermatt 1,500 meters below. 
The train link was opened way back in 1898 and goes through a couple of other stations which I discovered in Zermatt's other race, their ultramarathon, which is run in July. So this is where we arrived in the, in the last race. This was the finish right here. But I was in a much different state in that race. This time feeling much better. It's now time for the long descent back down into the valley, destination Furi. I'm determined to put my Sierzinal experience back into practice on this descent, which is not going to be easy. And something I learned during my previous races was to really tighten my laces on the downhills, which I do before putting myself into fifth gear. We're now passing through Riffelberg at 2,582 meters one of the stations through which the Gornegrat train passes through on its way up to the summit. I'm still feeling well at this point and taking advantage to descend as fast as I can. Some sections are becoming tricky with the risk of slipping into the ravine or twisting an ankle. I fall, but manage to avoid breaking anything the first warning signs to slow down. I arrive at the Riffle Alp 8 station to fuel up in liquids and solids. We're now around kilometer 22, so nearly halfway. The views so far have been absolutely stunning. Couldn't have hoped for a better day. The Matterhorn was totally cloud-free and the sun was shining strong. Probably even too strong. As we reached the lower altitudes, I was getting really hot and was wondering whether my two bottles would be so enough. So we're at uh, 2,200 meters. We've done uh, 1,768 meters of ascent. <sighs> About four hours in. Uh, feeling okay for the moment. Beautiful view. Let's see how it goes. Now getting much closer to the valley. It's getting really hot and I'm starting to feel my legs. I'm now wondering whether I probably pushed too much in the first half. I might pay the price in the second half of the race. The problem I have now is that we've merged with other races, shorter races, and obviously the guys have more energy and they're going, uh, going really fast and I have to make sure that uh, I'm not blocking anyone, which is, which is really annoying. So, and we're already, what is it? 25 kilometers at 1,800 meters. We've done already 2,000 meters elevation gain. Uh, so yeah, we can feel the, we can feel the effort. Uh, what, a, what a beauty, what a beauty.
Oh, now see. We've now reached the Fury Suspension Bridge, a bridge that I know well, having already crossed it with my family on our barbecue hikes. But I suffer from height sickness though, so each time I cross it, I'm very apprehensive. But the previous times, there were only a few people on it. This time, we're an entire army of runners crossing, making the bridge swing from one side to the other. As much as I would have liked to film the view, I just couldn't. I was too petrified. With much relief, I reach the other side and continue my way towards the next climb that will take us to the Schwarzsee. The crowd in Fury is incredible. So many people to welcome us through this part of Zermatt as we hit the bottom of the valley. It's really hot down here. After filling up my bottles and having a bite at the aid station, it's now time to get my head down and return into my concentration bubble to confront this grueling climb as we near the 27 kilometer mark. My legs can definitely feel the effort of the first part of the race, and I'm getting worried that I will have troubles in the next section, especially with the heat. Kilometer 29. Now I'm suffering. Jeez. This climb is tough. Luckily we found a stream to fill up our bottles because with this heat, jeez, losing a lot of water, finished my, uh, my bottle and uh, much faster than the, the normal. These are the summits we also I think see from this is tough. Only 2,400 meters ascent, kilometer 30. That's it. Kilometer 31, 2,500 meters ascent, and at uh, 2,500 meters, it's been uh, it's been pretty tough up to now. In the last section, I was really suffering. So we have hopefully a bit more food in my stomach, have a bit more energy. So it's still a fair way to go. So let's hope it's uh let's hope I get that energy. Oh, it's back here uphill again. I think I'm gonna walk some way now. That climb to Schwarzy was definitely a killer. 
The angle on some of those slopes was massive and it took a big toll on me. The heat is also affecting me a lot and I'm going through my water supplies at neck breaking speeds. I'm starting to wonder whether I'll make it to the finish at this rate, but I recall my objective. I need to finish. This race is only half of the next race. This is an appetizer. I need to grind through despite the pain. I know that this is the point at which the mind takes over, the difficult path, the challenge. I'm stronger than that discomfort. We're now entering the last third of the race and the final massive climb of the day. I still need to climb another 1,000 meters, but I'm now low on energy at this point. Jeez, my legs. Suffering. There's a guy getting some water in the stream. That's how hot it is here today. We're emptying our bottles extremely fast. But I'm not the only one having troubles. We are all now moving at a slow pace. The first half's climbs and descents combined with the heat has burnt everyone. And the only thing on everyone's mind now is just to manage the energy levels, especially as the distance to the next aid station is the greatest of all aid station separations. There's the Gama Grat over there. That's where we were this morning. to the next aid station. Need to stretch, I need to eat. So we've uh, passed the 3,000 meters ascent. Ah, I can't run anymore. Ah. No way. Don't want to fall down here. Despite the soft patch I had on the climb, my body has now somewhat recovered and I find an unexpected surge of energy that was apparently hidden. Given the flatter terrain, I start running. Like in life, when we think we have nothing more to give, there's still something lying deep down. You just need to dig deep until you find it. It's not easy, but perseverance is key. We're now getting closer to Zermatt, which we should soon see way down in the valley. But we're still another 10 kilometers away from the finish with still another climb to go and then the vertical descent towards the valley. It's not over and it'll be difficult. There's Zermatt down there. We finally arrive at the Trift Aid Station. It was a very long stint since the last station, but I do not hang around much. Just enough to fill my bottles and have something to eat before taking on the final climb of the day. I feel that my focus is not at the level it should be. The exhaustion is playing games on my concentration. I'm moving in autopilot, which is fine on the uphills but I'm worried about the very steep downhill that, that I'm about to take on. It's the first time I'm so apprehensive of the final section of a race. All right. 
right, so we're at uh, 3, uh, 2,500 meters. Done 3,300 meters ascent. My legs are knackered. Starting to ache in places I've never ached before. Not easy. Not easy. First nightmare just materialized. My ankle twists. After more than a thousand kilometers of training and racing, and I twist my ankle four kilometers from the finish of my last preparation race before my big 100 kilometer race just a couple of weeks away. I just can't believe it. I felt something pop in my ankle, but I'm still able to walk. I test the movement as I progress slowly across this narrow and difficult path. I think I can get to the bottom. But how will it feel the next day? And will I be able to do my 100 kilometer race? I'm devastated. One single error could cost me what I've been working towards for so many months. I try to clear those negative thoughts and try to focus on the job at hand, getting down this very steep descent towards Zermatt. It's heartbreaking to be going down so slowly after the incredible downhill I had earlier in the day. A day that's been amazing so far. This situation reminds me of other life experiences. When things are going great, they can all too easily just crash to the ground. But one cannot stop. It's not easy, but we have to move forward, relentlessly. And even though I was in pain, my soul was fulfilled by the prospect of seeing my children and my wife at the finish line. That was the only thought going through my heart and mind and enabling me to forget about the pain that was going through my body at each step of this downhill. Zermatt is now within reach. I'm going to make it after 9 hours and 40 minutes covering 49 kilometers and climbing over 3,300 meters. A near perfect day. A day that has been an emotional roller coaster. A day that was brutal on my body but where I never gave up. A day in which I pushed myself physically. A day during which I grew as a person, building mental resilience and endurance. A day that has made me stronger to confront the obstacles that life will put along my journey through existence, testing me. A day that has fulfilled my body, my mind and my soul, and which will end in apotheosis when I get reunited with my family after yet another odyssey through these alpine titans. <laughs> Things can get tough. Plans don't always go the way we hope they would. We can be hurt be in pain and suffer. But those we love will always be there to lift us, lift our body, lift our minds, lift our souls. Never give up. <laughs>